Even though I am late to the party with this kind of video, but when it comes to Crash Bandicoot, the fun just never ends. Around two years ago, I posted a video on my top 10 CTR Crash Team Racing racetracks for the PlayStation 1, and I knew I had to make an update video on that, but this time around, with Crash Team Racing Nitro Field on the PlayStation 4. I love the remake version, and I also do quite enjoy racing on the more polished racetracks I knew and loved back in the day. Even though this kinda might be the same video as before, but however, my opinion is completely different. Well, most of it anyway. And so, we're gonna be looking at my top 10 Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled Racetracks. This list will include racetracks from Crash Team Racing, Crash Nitro Kart, and the tracks from the Grand Prix. I do love most of them here, but I did have to trim some of them off to make this video possible. And keep in mind throughout the video that the entire list can change from time to time. But when it's all said and done, I think I've listed out an accurate and consistent list when it comes to my personal favourites. So with that being said, let's start the countdown. Number 10 is the most simplest and probably the easiest track to race on, Coco Park. Now, I like the PlayStation 1 edition. It was colourful and pretty to look at, and me and my sister would always play this track first because it was a nice warm-up before we got into the intense races. But if you think that looks gorgeous, wait until you played the remake version. The colour palettes are even brighter, which looks extremely delightful. I enjoy the more peaceful music here than the PlayStation 1 counterpart, and I like the Coco statue they added when you exit the tunnels. It shows personality from my point of view. Again, it is a basic race, but sometimes even the most basic of things can turn out to make an impact. Wait a second, I've already said that before. Oh great, this video is going to be a copy and paste, isn't it? Number 9, we have Oxide Station, which is pretty strange because I gave this track the number 2 spot on my older video, but like I said, we are looking at the Nitro Field Edition. I loved Oxide Station back then, and I still like it now. The design looks more futuristic, which does work in its favour. I enjoyed the tight turns you have to pull off, as it does bring a challenge, and I also love this part here where you jump from one section to another in outer space. Simply just awesome. It's a track I've always remembered back in the day. Oxide Station is a tough but also a rewarding track as well, and that depends on your playstyle. Excuse me, the fuck did you just say? No, okay, that's it, I'm done, I am leaving. Nobody calls my mom an armadillo and gets away with it. Now here's something different. Number 8 is Nina's Nightmare. Now I don't say this a whole lot, but I'm a sucker for horror things. Movies, video games, costumes, scary spooky skeleton song, you name it. And I for one particularly love this track because of its horror style. The soundtrack just really fits the racetrack nicely. I like the two pathways with the giant spider watching over you and you have to avoid the stomps. And trying to avoid the pumpkin spewing acid on the ground. There is also a neat trick you can do, but I can't pull it off because I'm not great at video games. So sad. But other than that, Nina's Nightmare is really enjoyable, and I hope to see more horror-like levels in future Crash Bandicoot games. Number 7 is Engine Labs. How do you expect to retrieve them when we don't have any Earthbound operatives left, 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 left? The music, the racetrack layout, it all takes me back to the good old days of playing the PlayStation 1 version. This track I feel is still good to race around on. You have some cool boost pads to jump off, then you have a loop tunnel that'll make you go faster even more. Then you have to avoid the big barrel rolling in your pathway. The tiny but sharp bumps to jump over to get more boosting. It may be tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, Engine Labs is a really fun track. And here's where I thought I was hoping I could make a huge comeback and somehow, but some way, I could end up winning the entire race until I ended up coming in second place. F's in the chat. Number six is Polar's Pass. Snow levels in video games are 
fucking great. As we have all demonstrated and seen throughout many video games like Crash Bandicoot 2, Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy, and Ratchet and Clank 2 to name a few. And now you can add CTR Nitro Fuel to that list cause this snow track is also good as well. There's a couple of nice tricks you can do like this one where you can jump to the other side saving maybe 3-5 to five seconds and this cool jump over the barricade that's always enjoyable to pull off. Everything about this racetrack just screams fun, exciting, and I always feel happy every time I play Polar's Pass. Number 5 is Papu's Pyramid, or Papa's Pyramid, depending on your mindset, but let's not think about that. Fun fact, I put this track at the number 5 spot on the PlayStation 1 version, and here we're back with the same number position because it's still a good track to race on. Comparing this track to the PlayStation 1 version, the colours once again are bright and pretty to look at. But what I really like about Papu's Pyramid is the insane shortcut trick you can perform. Um, okay. But, at least I can do this. Yeah, I did it! It's another one of those racetracks that just takes me back to my nostalgia days because of how much I enjoyed racing on here, and it still remains as one of the classics. Number 4 is Sewer Speedway. Now I didn't think too much about this track on the PlayStation 1 because I thought it was just a very basic layout with not much interesting happening. But when I played the Remake Edition, I learned to have a greater appreciation with Sewer Speedway. As you drive through the sewers, you'll come across two paths to take. Speed across boost pads, these rolly things, I don't know what they're called, but avoid that. And of course, pulling off an awesome trick where you jump very high to reach a new path to take. I really do love this racetrack overall, and I get very excited whenever I play online, and the majority vote for this track, so I can race against other players to show off my skills. Number 3 is Hot Air Skyway. This is very interesting to me. This got the number 1 spot in my older video and now in here it's now reached it in the number 3 spot. Don't feel bad for it because this is the final track we're looking at in terms of the OG. I absolutely love this racetrack with all my heart. It's still very cool to play through it in modern HD edition. It offers a nice challenge and you try to win by everything you have learned in your journey and use those skills to the best of your ability. But of course, what really gets me going is the music here. I always jump around feeling nothing but joy as I drive around the track itself. It may still be one of my favourite tracks to this day, but since we haven't reached a number one spot yet, let's continue. Number two is Deep Sea Driving. There you go guys and gals, we finally have a Crash Nitro Kart racetrack, you happy? The races in Nitro Kart on the PlayStation 2 I hated, and it's mainly because of the controls, it just wasn't enjoyable to play. But if you take the Nitro Kart races to Nitro Fueled and add the better control handling and remove the anti-gravity sections, you have probably one of the most funnest tracks to race on. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious. While deep sea driving is very simple in design, but what makes it stand out is the amount of speed you can obtain throughout the race. It's just so crazy to see that you can zoom past everyone so quickly that you almost feel like Sonic the Hedgehog. These parts are always the best in deep sea driving, and I think that's why I love it so much. So before we get to number 1, here are a few honourable mentions. Hyper Speedway is the last track you race on in the Nitro Kart story, and I do like it. The remake and the PlayStation 2 version as well. It focuses on turning those tight corners and performing a cool trick, but I could never do it really well. Next is Electron Avenue. I extremely love the colour background choice for this race, and I like the track design as well, being futuristic, and the music is quite catchy. And lastly, we have Thunderstruck. I fucking hated this track in Nitro Kart. The lighting was terrible and I didn't enjoy the loop section. But in Nitro Field, it is 10 times way better with just being able to see more clearly and just having a more better layout overall. And number one, we have Twilight Tower. While I drive through this track as a small lizard boy, I'll say that for a Grand Prix racetrack, this was a track I love racing on. I like how the entire race can go from day to night, the music fits the atmosphere very well, and the track layout itself was nicely done too. After experimenting many Grand Prix throughout Nitro Field, a lot of them were good, but to me, 
Twilight Tower really brought an interesting charm from my point of view. It may not be everyone else's favourite track, but I do allow everyone to express themselves on how they feel about any sort of video game opinions, and this to me is my favourite track to race on in Nitro Field. And that was my top 10 Crash Team Racing Nitro Field racetracks. If you have some of your personal favourites, then be sure to comment down below and share your opinions with everyone. And with that being said, thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the links will be down in the description box below. My name is Cheese and Crackers, telling you to keep calm, and keep playing video games.